Hello, my name is Benjamin Kelly and I teach at Caledonia Regional High School in New Brunswick, Canada. And today's presentation is titled, What's Possible in New Brunswick Education, or MB Ed, Innovation, Industry Partnerships, and Inclusion. Before beginning, there's some things to keep in mind. First of all, every success you're going to see here is a result of what's happening in classes. Not extracurricularly, not on weekends, but in classes. Courses like middle school technology, broad-based technology, and the courses listed here, these are the courses that allow for these successes. The support we've had from industry and education partners has been priceless so far. And remember, we are not the only school in New Brunswick education finding success. A lot of the projects you're going to see happen in the last three or four years, but one in particular happened a few years ago, and it involved Michael Goh, who is a successful entrepreneur now, but was an innovative student. And that was racing physics. Racing physics took physics students in a high school level um, education and combined them and teamed them up with skilled trade students to study the physics behind racing. And they had RC cars they were working with, and it was, uh, it was quite a time. Um, CRHS had a leadership role in that program, and even though it was a few years ago, it shows that you know, our school has been dabbling in innovation for, for quite some time, along with some other schools who were involved in this program. As far as we know, Caledonia Regional is the first school in Canada to offer a drenography program, first K-12 school to offer drenography. Drenography is the application of drones in academic study. Um, you can see in the top left our kids did uh, videography and filmmaking. The goal was to enter the New York, uh, New York Drone Film Festival. In the lower left we did some flood surveying which made the news. There's Cindy Day, our local weather uh, personality, um, showing off our pho photography of flood damage in the area. We're dabbling in drone racing right now. Um, it's new and maybe that's a new application for racing physics from the, from the last slide. And uh, Mark LeBlanc's in the lower, lower right of the screen, and he is our industry professional that's helped us through this, and he is absolutely priceless to our program. At our school, students make iOS app development for iPads and iPhones and uh, even the Apple Watch. Um, students are told that the world has enough flashlight apps so that they have to come up with something that will actually change lives. In the top left, uh, Liam and Nathan decided to make a, an app for nonverbal. Uh, students so they could hit a button and actually have their thoughts communicated uh, on the iPad using an iPad. Alex in the top right decided to make a Syrian translator app with school specific sayings for his classmates. So for instance how much does this cost or when is this due? Um, school specific Syrian um, I guess Arabic buttons and English audio being played from the app in the lower right, there's Liam and Nathan competing in an innovation challenge as well as an entrepreneurship challenge. And Liam and Nathan um, finished fourth. But there's nothing more empowering than being able to stand up in front of a panel of judges and say you'd like to make an MB Power app or a Power Solutions app for people and knowing that you have the power to make that app instead of farming out the service to somebody else. So uh, again, the thing that came, comes up time and time again with these students is they're just thankful for the opportunity. Every opportunity you give them, they're just thankful for the opportunity, no matter how it goes. They just, they just want to thank you time and time again for the opportunity. And that's what we need to provide, more opportunities. Unity 3D is a software that allows our students to build games equal to the quality that they would play on Xbox or on PlayStation or computers, or even on tablets. Um, Unity 3D is also an amazingly generous company in the fact that their software is usually $1,500, but they provided 80 licenses to our school for free, and they have that program for everyone. So our students can build racing games, jet fighter games, um, they can build Slenderman in the top right, a full remake of Slenderman, and these are grade 9 students doing this, so imagine what I can do with them in the next three years of game, de game development. We have universities locally offering game development degrees, and I just feel that I'm giving my kids a beautiful head start on that program, um, entering into their post-secondary education with a, I guess, uh, an exposure, and a, a lot of times it's more than an exposure. So you can bring imaginations to life uh, with Unity in every way, shape, and form, and uh, our uses of Unity go beyond just video game making. For years now, one of the ways we've been going beyond just video game making with Unity is the development of virtual reality experiences. So yes, we, we hook up kids to computers and let them experience um, virtual reality downloaded from the internet, for instance, the solar system tours and things like that. And our kids 
with exceptionalities or students with exceptionalities really benefit from that. Um, but we also involve them in the making of virtual reality experiences. For instance, the full Viking village in the lower right, or the uh, in the middle of the slide in the bottom, the winter wonderland with the German tanks. Um, students can make a situation or an experience and then wander around in that experience. And you know, future future developments here could see us using HoloLens to develop uh, mixed reality. But right now we have uh, just a few years of experience now with Oculus and virtual reality experience creation. So this is this is something kids really get into. Uh, virtual reality is kind of cutting edge at this point, and we are deep into it. The cybersecurity industry in New Brunswick is about to take off, and these are high-paying, highly important jobs that our students can walk into if they're exposed to cybersecurity concepts at an early enough age. So Cyber, Cyber MB, part of Opportunities NB, has started to encourage schools to enter the Cyber Patriot Challenge uh, as part of Canadian Cyber Titan uh, program. And here's our kids at Caledonia competing in an international cybersecurity uh, practice round. This is just a practice round. But they will have the opportunity coming up very soon to, to participate in a full-blown international competition where they solve vulnerabilities and systems in Ubuntu and also in Windows and, uh, and really get their hands dirty in cybersecurity in a way that we have just skimmed over in the past. So I have cyberedu.ca being developed to help other teachers who wish to get involved. And uh, this really is a strong future for our students, and they should seriously look at it. In our skilled trades program at Caledonia, under the leadership of Mr. Robertson, our students are building a full tiny house for a client. This is a twenty-five dollars to $30,000 project where the client pays in installments and the students build that client the tiny house um, of their dreams to the specifications that the client wants. So you can see here these are grade 11 and 12 uh, shop students and they are building right from the trailer, building the home on the trailer and this will be a full tiny house for a client in New Brunswick. Um, we like to think that Kent Holmes who just made the announcement about their secret tiny home project, we like to believe at Caledonia that we inspired them uh, to enter this market. And if you want to follow along with the build, uh, our digital productions class, a uh, nice partnership, will be covering the build um, on their tinyhouseedu.com website. So that's a great way to follow along and, uh, and stay up updated with the build. Microsoft's Minecraft in the classroom is possibly the most powerful thing that I've shown here today. We have the ability to teach skills that employers are really looking for later on in life and develop full students with this one product. The product costs five dollars maximum per student per year. Um, it relies on Office 365 and we will we will make some gains in that area as a province I'm sure in the near future. But it teaches the skills like collaboration, communication, creativity, critical thinking, character development, computational thinking, digital citizenship, empathy education, and coding. There's many more things. We can even teach curricular outcomes like math and language arts. This can be used in the curriculum and also for those 21st century skills that are lie outside of the curriculum that people are really looking for in our future graduates from this province. So if there's one thing I really look forward to, it's the growth of Minecraft in our New Brunswick education system. And I really hope there's ways that we can get it to as many students as possible. Okay, it's time for the speed round, and these are just a few projects that I wanted to add on at the end. Um, a few years ago, we started heating homes with the sun. This is a, a solar home heater that the students uh, designed and built in Albert County. It has uh, blackened downspouts with glazing over the top, and air from the basement comes in at 13 degrees Celsius and returns back to the home anywhere from 45 to 65 degrees Celsius. So there's our STEM program, our STEM sort of, uh, again, a combination between tech and trades. Uh, in the middle, we have Grace Fenton, who in grade 7 uh, designed an anti-bullying flag. She felt that the current anti-bullying uh, pink t-shirts were great for inside of a building, but buildings had no way to show outwardly to the public that they were supportive of anti-bullying uh, agendas. So Grace decided to make a flag, and this flag is now sold nationwide by the flag shop. And uh, right across our nation, Grace's uh, design from my tech class is being flown um, during the anti-bullying periods um, that we see annually. Uh, up in the top right, we have an article from the paper that says, uh, or basically highlights how schools can be fun. And in that, they address Caledonia as a center of excellence. This is the editors of our local paper. They called us a center of excellence, which then became our mission statement for the building. So 
the the local press was so impressed by by what we were doing down here that they called us a center of excellence and we then shaped the entire building's uh, i guess direction and mission towards being a center of excellence um, in every way shape and form and last but not least in the lower right there we have soundtrap which is basically apple's garage band but in the cloud it allows for collaborations uh, when you're making music and we have a project going on right now with south korea that allows us to um, collect sounds from our local environment, upload them to a web space, and then make music from those sounds. So we'll, we'll be using the Korean students' sounds, they'll be using ours, and at the end we can get together and talk about our music collaborations. So just another innovative approach to something we know and love, which is just music creation in the classroom, but Soundtrap allows for that global collaboration piece to be added in. I mentioned at the start of this video, it's not just Caledonia showing innovation and innovative products. If you look around our province, there's a whole bunch of schools popping up with some great stuff. In the north, they're doing underwater robotics to explore their waterways, uh, submarines. In the east, they're doing uh, 3D printed lights to send to Haiti and other countries who need to study by light at night and have no power capabilities to supply that. In the west, they're doing design, um, students are designing wearable technology. In the south, they're doing big data studies where they have Raspberry Pis connected to weather stations and then students are tasked with analyzing all that data that's pouring in. Um, technology mentors work every single day in our district to build up every teacher to, a, I guess, a more innovative use of technology in their classrooms. And our technicians, who I don't have listed here, are running around um, doing magic every single day, um, trying to get every teacher's needs and desires um, to meet both policy and actual technical capabilities. New Brunswick has been succeeding year after year in the Hour of Code. More and more of our students are participating in this Hour of Code, but also more and more of our curriculum documents are acknowledging a need for code in the fact that some of them are even saying 10% to 20% of your actual course will involve computer coding or computational thinking, that type of strategy, as well as the trades are being uh, pushed as well. By, by curriculum documents. Maker Education is really taking off thanks in part to Brilliant Labs who will work with teachers to not only set up a maker mindset but also a space in the school that students can come to to work on maker projects and, and creative individual or group um, basically innovation um, projects. So Brilliant Labs has really spearheaded that and it is growing very quickly in New Brunswick. So wrapping up this presentation on what's possible in MB Ed or New Brunswick Education, um, here's some reasons that I'm MB proud. We can provide students with the opportunities they need in our schools and they are thankful for every opportunity that we provide. We just need a little more organization and a little more uh, structure to making sure that more schools find the success that is waiting for them. Uh, we do have industry partners participating and we are looking um, to, for more and they are looking for us, more are looking to help. And the most important part about industry partners is teachers have great ideas every now and again or every day, but they stay locked in the head as ideas unless a partner is there to support them. So partners really do make things happen. Otherwise, a lot of these crazy ideas that you saw in the slideshow here today would have stayed ideas and probably faded and never happened. And then finally, we are insisting that our, schools in, uh, our students in schools are doing something meaningful and purpose-driven on a daily basis. We're moving more and more towards making products and making students do something that means something to them instead of um, just do the task because you need to write a test on this in a week. Um, I do believe that we need a little more um, from everybody in, in New Brunswick education. Um, but I do love my job. You can see from what you just saw in the slideshow that I absolutely love my, I love my job every single day I go to work, and I want more teachers to feel that way um, when the bell rings at the end of the day. Thanks for listening. You can follow me on Twitter, and uh, that was my update on what's possible for New Brunswick education.